British Minister of International Development Alan Duncan has just returned from Bangladesh, so I went to speak to him about his trip. Yeah, I, I went there for four days. Uh, I, of course, looked at the um, programmes that DFID um, is having in the country, which covers a lot of areas. Uh, I saw a number of senior politicians, but I particularly wanted to focus on the garment sector following the Rana Plaza factory collapse. Over a thousand people, as a result of the collapse, lost their lives. It's not an isolated incident. Um, just a few months before that, we saw a factory fire. A week later, we saw another factory fire. This seems to be an ongoing issue in Bangladesh. Yeah. The garment sector is a picture of good news and some dreadful bad news. The good news is that it employs four million people, 80% of whom are women, and exports products to the value of £13 million. And 25 or 30 years ago, this just did not exist. So this is very good news economically over the long term for Bangladesh. The bad news is that the standards that need to underpin this sector have been outpaced by the growth in the sector itself, and they need to catch up. So the challenge now for the whole of the development community and the government of Bangladesh uh, and everyone in the industry is to make sure that those standards catch up with the growth in the sector. The good brands do some of the best things. Some of the worst practices happen with brands you've never even heard of, or just people who make things. So we've got to make sure that everybody has health and safety, properly constructed premises, and proper employment rights. And where does the responsibility for that lie? Of course, I know you mentioned the brands. Um, what sort of changes does a government need to put into place? I think the responsibility lies everywhere, but you could perhaps divide it into two. On the one hand, uh, brands or companies who are buying garments from Bangladesh need to have responsibility uh, and integrity in their supply chain from the shop where they sell the t-shirt or whatever it is, right back to the sewing machine where it's made. So they must be responsible for the standards and quality of where the garment is made, including the way that people are treated and if it's safe and that kind of stuff. Equally, this is the other side, people in Bangladesh, the government, the factory owners, and the people uh, who own the buildings, must meet those same standards. You can't have generators on a roof. You can't have a building with no fire escapes. You can't have people being paid less than the minimum wage and things like that. And everybody has to get up to those standards before the commercial competition can then begin. We heard, um, speaking to a number of different people, have heard of griddles on doors, as you mentioned, no fire escape. On this particular occasion, it was reported that people supposedly entered back into the building after knowing that it was unsafe. Now, the government has charged seven people. They've taken them in saying that um, these are the held responsible. But is this how we move on? Is, are, the, is, are, are the government reacting as they should have? They will be reacting as they should if they follow it through. It is contemptible that people were made to go back into a building when cracks have been found. The Brack Bank evacuated its people and did not send them back. Indeed, it said they must not go back. Other factory owners said people will not be paid if they don't go back and then the building collapsed. So I hope these prosecutions will be followed all the way through and we will be very, very angry and loud in our condemnation if political influence is allowed to get people out of a proper court trial. And what is our role here in Britain and elsewhere around the world? I know we made a pledge of £18 million pounds, uh, whilst you were out there. Um, where do we hope that money will be used and how do we hope to aid progression in the country? But the £18 million pounds was an announcement we were planning anyway and as part of our extensive you know, nearly £200 million pounds a year uh, development programme in, in uh, Bangladesh. 
Uh, we do a number of things. Uh, first of all, we try and equip people, particularly women, to know their employment rights and to be able to band together uh, to make sure that their rights are delivered. We are trying to make sure that uh, people, again, mostly women, uh, have the skills training to be able to hold down the jobs in the first place. So we are trying to empower some of the poorest people in the country to hold down a job, have a livelihood for themselves and their family, and to be able to go from one building block to another building block for themselves, and then of course ultimately for the country as a whole. I know you mentioned 80% of the work workforce within the garments industry are women, a lot of them young women, young mothers a lot of the time. Um, it seems to me that when I, when I heard that people went back into that building, it was a question that, that I couldn't quite get my head around. So when I thought about that, I thought these people are in a very difficult situation, a lot of them in poverty-ridden families. Do you think that may be the root cause in terms of a lot of these people being exploited and as to why the, the operators in the country seem to feel they can actually get away with this? There's a very fine line between exploitation and adequate employment. And uh, in the good ones, they're properly employed. In the bad ones, it's probably fair to say they are uh, exploited. So um, we want to make sure that the standards uh, are set uh, universally and um, that uh, things are, are followed through properly. So uh, we will really focus on this sector uh, very, very, very hard over the coming months. If I could just finally ask you, um, of course, the garments industry was your main focus on your visit. Uh, we know that there's a lot going on in the country in terms of a number of different things, and of course there is an election looming. Um, is there anything else that you think um, we can be doing here to support development in the country? I think there's a very simple sort of moral message, if you like. Some people are saying, don't buy things from Bangladesh because the standards are not good enough. My view is, mend it, don't end it. Keep doing it, but make sure that the standards constantly rise so that everybody knows that a Bangladesh garment is also a badge of quality. We also, of course, have to work on the conduct of their politics. I want free, fair and honest elections and there is too much political violence in the country and so we are also very strong in our con condemnation of any violence. Democracy should be honest, open, peaceful and fair. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you.